2,000 hit points, it's dropping, the barrels come out, it's solid with the Mystic Shot, Emperor might have saved the day! G2 surprised me because I didn't expect them to be at such a high level. Oh! They have uh, pretty good players, at least individually, they have a good coach. Up the ultimate and then knock back into the wall, completely surprising unicorns. Fox drops down, G2 oh. kill, another one, they're in control this game. They seem to synergize really well together and they play really uh, coordinated but very aggressive. Perks actually turning on power people in the mid lane, he's gonna flash away but the ignite will take him down for the first blood. I think they've got a really good grasp on the meta. They close out games really fast and very decisively. The flash forwards and the package comes across and knocks them both into Reckless. Oh, they both go down. That was beautiful from Perks into Kekas' play. Welcome to the European League Championship Series. We're coming to you live from our home in Berlin, Germany. As you can see what's going on here in the studio, Elements walking in as they are up against OG in the very first game of the day. There we see them setting up on stage as well. A well needed or a very important game rather for the both of them. And that's what our fans know as well. The Fnatic fan there, super cheerful, um, cheering on his team later playing the match of the week versus G2 and all the rest of the fans as well. Hello, I'm Evie Shogs, the Portrait, here to break down all of today's big plays, misplays, and replays with the help of James Stress O'Leary, Richard Pulse Cam, and Martin the Fischio Lunge. Uh, good evening. Welcome to week six already gentlemen it's going so incredibly fast time flies when you're having fun and it's uh, gonna be a fun week we got some big big games today we definitely do and it's a lot of fun already now uh, that we've officially crossed the halfway point of the spring split it is time for our teams to kick it into high gear if they want to make playoffs you talk about fun but the playoffs are on the line g2 and h2k are still grappling for the top spot while vitality and the uol are tied right behind them Fnatic and OG round out the top six, which is not something we expected coming into the season. I uh, know coming into the season, obviously not with Origin. I even called them the best team in the start of the split, and that didn't happen. We've seen some bad games from Origin. Now we're more used to them being in the middle of the table, honestly. And both for Fnatic and Origin, we're just kind of waiting for playoffs and see if they can manage to then climb towards the top spots or not. Well, you don't have to go too far down beneath them to find Giants and Rocket who are fighting. Still, their goal right now has to be that seventh the seventh place spot, that spot that misses relegations. That's what they're fighting for, both only on one win right now. Yeah, in our very first game of the day, it's for the sixth spot. Elements will have their chance to climb into that sixth place in just a few minutes when they will face Origin. Rocket then will look to start their fight out of relegation territory against Splice. And later on, it is our match of the week between Fnatic and G2 Esports Pulse. Yeah, it's super excited for that one. I mean, G2 have just looked so good from week to week, and that's not what we were expecting coming into the split. Like, we thought Origin were going to be the best team, but G2 coming from Challenger have shown such potential and then have acted on it from week to week. Did lose a game last week. You know, the first one they lost in quite a while, and it was a bad game, honestly, for G2 in terms of how they were team fighting. Normally, they're super aggressive and very coordinated, but they missed a lot of engages. That's what happens when you play a fairly risky style. One or two mistakes and the game is over. Can't do it today against Fnatic because Fnatic is a good enough team to punish those mistakes. And now we get to see what Fnatic can do with an extra week practice with Clay and that support. I'm excited to see these two teams head off. An extra week of practice and an extra week of things to deal with as we are going to be playing on patch 6.3 here today. First up, what was hit by the nerf bat? Of course, Corky, Graves, Poppy and Rise very seriously. So many nerfs to the, the top tier champions, the biggest of which probably is Ryze. We're not expecting Dead. to see him. Yeah, a lot of players gone. talking about how he's just gone. Yep. Corky, small damage nerfs, still expecting to see him though. Yeah, I think the key thing is Corky, Poppy, Graves are still going to be strong picks. I honestly expect Poppy to remain almost where she is at this point. And it just depends on the team. Do you want to play pure tanks or do you want more carry potential from a Poppy? Do you want the mix that she can bring? Because obviously she has a good laning phase and then becomes fairly tanky. She's still going to be played. Uh, we can't say the same for Ryze, he's gone. Yeah, a lot of champions have moved down the tier list, but some have gone up, such as Kog'Maw, who got buffed on this patch, his W now has a minimum damage. He does so much damage just with one or two items in that spike. He hits a bit of a lull when he's going towards the Gwinsu's first item, but once he gets there, it's insane damage. He's good, but people are overrating him. 
big time. <laughs> and that doesn't mean he's bad. Again, I'm saying overrating. Yeah. You know, he yeah. goes from one num number one to number two. I'm just making sure people <laughs> like to take it out of context. <laughs> um, he's going to be a good pick, but I think mm. he's going to be a bit of a trap. Yes. Because you need to have like a comp build around him to protect him because he needs to almost stand still and just hammer away to do maximum DPS. We're going to see games where, where teams will leave it open, draft like very hard engage against him and ban out like Lulu, Janna potentially, and then he's going to suffer. So I'm expecting him to be open in some of the games, but he might also be banned in some of them. A bit of a mix. I'm on the same page with that. I also think that another champion that went up in the tier list with a couple of tweaks is Gragas. I even think to the point where I would say he's going to be an influence in almost every game this week. Just from what we saw in Challenger, he's a good solid form of disengage. He had a couple of tweaks that were versions of nerfs previously. And I feel like in the current meta right now, you can run Strength of Ages, still get damage. I agree it. so far. <laughs> and I just think he's going to be such a strong presence in the jungle that uh, we're going to see a lot of him. The Fischer. I think we will see some Gragas. I don't think we will see him every game at all. I think still like Nidalee, Kindred, Rek'Sai, Lee Sin, these picks will be there and they will battle Gragas for that spot. He's going to be a solid like tier two pick because Nidalee is the tier one right now that everyone wants to get uh, go for, but it's going to be banned in most of the games. You can pick him if you want a frontline tank. His ganking is uh, his early game is not the greatest. His ganking is fine, but like his one v one against the strong junglers we have now is not going to be the greatest. If he falls behind, he's super weak. So mm. uh, I disagree. He is. He is. I, I, I <laughs> really disagree. If he falls behind, super weak. the on. only thing he has Hang on. Whoa, whoa. Strength right. of the Ages gives you a lot of tankiness right now. So he's 300 very, HP, right? and then his disengage and mobility alone give him a very strong basis. That if you're behind, but some of the rest of your team are fine, you can pick and choose your fights exceptionally effectively. You are over hyping his ulti as a disengage tool. Oh. He's building a AP oh, okay, item okay. first. Okay. He needs gold and farm to then become tanky after. So if he falls behind, he doesn't get that gold okay. and he's a Wait, front line who's very squishy. One more, more thing from Pulse, maybe? When he hits Runic Echo, so he clears the juggle so fast. We Congratulations. So does every other jungler in the current meta. Ah, but so, then you get to that point. Okay. I mean, I'd love to discuss <laughs> with you guys about this for a, a longer time, but I think we should just watch the game yeah, and discuss after what kind of impact We're going to see him, but not every game. Not every game. We will see. Something else we need to touch on though for the assassins or the AD assassins Duskblade coming in the mix how much we will see it how much will it will um, up the prevalence of picks like Zed there's been a lot of talk Kogma, Gragas what about Zed guys? Uh, uh. I mean Duskblade it looks very fancy on paper very good stats from the item it's actually 100% gold efficient just from the stats itself problem is I feel like there's so many other items you still want to build on Zed before you go for Duskblade and I still feel like there's so many picks in the meta that counter Z, like Lulu, Tom Kench, a lot of the tanks up in top lane. So we might see a little bit more of Z, but I don't think he's going to be like a massive power pick just because of Duskblade. Yeah, I kind of echo that because you don't really build a first item. It's more like a second or a third one. And because it's a passive, not an active, only very few champions really benefit from it. Because if you just accidentally auto attack someone, you just lost a two minute cooldown. So I don't think we'll be seeing it like every single game. And I don't think it will mm. bring up those AD assassins to tier one. The last change we have to talk about is the change to dragons. Dragon two and four have been adjusted. Uh, given a little bit more strength, but it's not enough to force people to fight over every single dragon. So if you get four dragons, five dragons, it's going to be a bit stronger, but it's not game changing. All right, we'll see what happens. And with a new patch in play, we want to know what you are predicting. Tweet at LL Esports with the hashtag EULCS and tell us what do you think is the most impactful change of patch 6.3 and why. There's a lot that our guys have discussed here. We'll see what happens. For now, though, we're going to dial in on the action and our first match of the day between Elements and Origin. Elements will tie OG in sixth with a win today. And that statement alone is kind of surprising uh, looking at last year and especially at how we thought Elements would be doing. They did break their losing streak last week. A five-game losing streak is now uh, gone, so that should be a mental stimulus for them. Yeah, it's almost ridiculous. Like, coming into the split, we just didn't think this would be the case. And right now, there's a very real possibility that Elements could even up with them, even surpass Origin. So Big at the statement. very start, so at the very start, right? Like we saw elements, and they were beating the bottom tier teams. We were like, okay, this is expected. They'll start losing against people who are better than them. And then we saw Origin kind of from week to week do the same thing as elements. And now we're sitting right here. Yeah, I mean that is quite interesting. Elements is the strongest out of the bottom four teams. But when we look, take a look at the record from OG against the top six teams and the bottom four teams, given okay, OG is also part of the top six, but they've only booked one win against the yeah. top six teams, and uh, elements has zero. But it isn't very far apart. This is absolutely crazy for me to look at. Mm -hmm. I don't think we've ever seen this in the LCS where the bottom four teams compared to the top six teams are that big of a gap in between. Because as you guys can see on your screen, 
Rocket is the only team in the bottom four who's won a game against a top six team. And that was week one, day one against Vitality. Yep. Outside of that, they've lost every single one together with the rest of the guys. Origin have only beaten one team in top six, that's Unicorns of Love. And then all of us have just been beating the bottom teams. So they are, again, the gatekeepers blocking you from getting into top six. And there still is a big difference, in my opinion, between Origin and the bottom four. So I don't even think this game is going to be very close. I think Origin is going to be massive favorites to take it. I'm with you. They're, they're the gatekeepers, they do seem to be so much better. Uh, a lot of that, I feel, is just their ability to inevitably play around Niels. He does, regardless of how Origin look, he still looks like a top-tier AD carry here in Europe. His individual performances have been enough. And I think that is just strong enough to keep Origin getting these wins over the bottom four. So I don't think they have too much to worry about if they can work on their improvements in time for playoffs there is the potential that they can make a run but they are still in that sixth plot and they do seem to deserve it now we will see what happens and as we head inside for picks and bands we'll hear what Sven thinks of his rematch against elements our first game against elements they got out drafted like really hard i would say they gave us a good comp and their comp didn't have many ways to win the game they're playing stuff like cork Sidian and late game against blue Lucian. they just can't win their play is, is not too bad, I think. They have like moments where they shine and moments where they do good plays and actually good things. But they also have their derp moments where they mess it up. And I think I'm feeling good for that much, at least. 